Are you tired of the same old pro wrestling? Then check out the amazing action on Powerslam.tv, the biggest indie pro wrestling channel in the world. Get over 4,000 hours of the best pro wrestling events from over 110 of the biggest names in the industry from over 15 countries around the globe. Get your free trial today at Powerslam.tv. The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. things elite episode two i am the sly one jordan fox and with me as always is your floyd and savior mr floyd johnson jr floyd what's happening man man today is saturday i'm at work <laughs> so i'm talking about a little wrestling before uh this show we got a lot to cover so it's gonna be like all thriller no filler today uh we're gonna start with some breaking news from last night Man, hit us with it! Hit us with it! Uh, last night at a at a show in North Cross, Georgia, aka Atlanta, uh, SCU was fighting uh, Pentagon and Ray Phoenix. Uh, after the match, the Young Bucks came to the ring and offered Pentagon and Ray Phoenix contracts with uh, All Elite Wrestling. Uh, they um, th- they uh, teased it for a while, and they said yes. So the two uh, two huge signings, two of the best wrestlers in the world, uh, Ray Phoenix and Pentagon, are now all elite. They're all in with all elite. Uh, I, for me, these were my two. To me, I know a lot of people. They'll say Kenny Omega, and I I I'm one of those people that always assumed that Kenny Omega was signing. But I out, I said outside of the people that we had heard previously, I figured these were the two most important signings because these are people that Pentagon and Ray Phoenix are people that the wrestling world, the the hardcore wrestling audience knows, right? But there is a whole generation of people that like wrestling have never heard of them. And I just think when people see them, they're, they're going to be a reason AEW explodes. Really? So you think Pentagon and Phoenix are going to be the reason that AEW is... I, I think is... I think they have the ability to be as... Ju- what what the cruiserweights were to WCW back in the day, I think what well, that's what Ray Phoenix and Pentagon can be for AEW. They are people like the hardcore wrestling audience, Meltzers, the people that had Meltzer accounts knew who Ray Mysterio was, right? The ECW uh-huh. audience knew who Ray Mysterio was, but I didn't know who Ray Mysterio was. You know what I mean? I was a person that just watched Raw, Nitro, just watched what was on TV. I wasn't a part of the internet wrestling community. I didn't get the dirt sheets or anything like that, right? So when I saw Ray Mysterio, I saw Psychosis, I saw Dean Malenko, I saw all these people that these hardcore fans have known forever, but I had seen for the first time. It changed my life. It changed how I watch wrestling, right? So uh, I think that's what Pentagon and Phoenix are doing right now. They are putting on some of the best work and best matches in the world that a lot of people don't know about. I got you. I got you. I like it. They. So, I know that, uh, was it Pentagon that took on Kenny Omega at All In when it, we were there? Yes. 
and that was a phenomenal match. Like that's uh, these two guys are a rare breed that can go in there and have a one on one match or a tag match. Yeah, you know? and, yeah, and it was like they did it how they did it the, the way Pete Dunn and Mark Andrews did it. They did it when people didn't know about them, and they got in a ring, and by the end of the match, they had won them over. You know what I mean? Pentagon right. was the breakout star of Lucha Underground. Uh, King Phoenix or Ray Phoenix is his brother. And I just think with the stage, th- th- first it was all in. A lot of people figured out who they were. But with the stage that AEW is going to present, I think they are. they might be those, those next breakout stars. I wouldn't doubt it, man. I wouldn't doubt it. Um, so that's our breaking news for the week. What happened this week on BTE? I did not actually get to catch being the elite. So can you break it down for me? So yes, it was being elite episode one thirty six. Matt, I believe it's had one hundred thirty six episodes. <laughs> yes, and I've watched most of them. Matt and Nick uh, were, uh, you know, and it's kind of funny. They spent most of last year talking about how much they didn't like traveling, and they've been home, you know, for a little bit, you know, because they're, you know, working in the office, getting the AEW stuff uh, ready, and they say they kind of miss indie wrestling because they hadn't been independent in a while, so they said they were going to go out and see people, so they were in the airport, and... They were talking about how they wanted it to be a surprise, but then they would they sent out pictures from Sleepless in Seattle. Big big shout out to that because that's one of my favorite movies. I'm a big rom com guy, and they just sent out a picture from Sleepless in Seattle to uh, you know let everyone know, kind of subtle that they're going to be in Seattle, and they uh, did a surprise in, uh, visit to Defy Wrestling. Uh, they came in, did their super kicks and some moves, and then uh, talked about how indie wrestling is not dying, uh, that they saw 20 or 25 of the most talented people they've ever seen, and they believe in independent wrestling. They were independent wrestling. Just because they're going to uh, AEW doesn't mean independent wrestling is going to die. It's like, basically, it's going to give the next generation a chance, you know, that kind of thing. And they uh they did uh that and then we cut to a scene and believe me i haven't watched this since monday i probably should have watched it again this morning but they cut to a scene where kenny had his phone and it was doing the countdown and it looks like the countdown is going to end up ending around next friday right around thursday or uh, around next thursday just in time uh, for what we're going to talk about later, the uh, ticket on sale party at MGM. Oh, ah, okay. Which that's actually the next thing I want to talk about. So that that's called uh, the talent pool at the MGM Grand Hotel. Yes, right. Uh, yes, that is uh, going to be February seventh, uh, Thursday, February seventh, at eight p.m. Central Time time at the talent pool at MGM Grand Hotel. Uh, what we have promised is. Um, Brandy is going to um, announce some new uh, uh, new talent uh, new talent for the women's division. Um, they're going to announce, I guess, when the tickets go on sale. And for what it sounds like, they might be announcing a certain, uh, certain uh, free agent who became a free agent yesterday at midnight, uh, Kenny Omega. They might be announcing him signing. Yeah, yeah, that's what it sounds like from what you talked about on BTE with them having the the countdown yeah. uh, looking like it'll end, you know, next Friday. That's, I mean, I would imagine. Any idea how much money they're going to offer Kenny Omega? Because, I mean, they reported, or I say they, you know, most uh, wrestling websites reported that WWE offered them $3.5 million a year on a downside guarantee. Yeah, um, I'm going to... I, I understand the startup co- company. I couldn't. I honestly couldn't imagine what his number is going to be. I think I, I'm guessing. Definitely think it's going to be seven figures, and I definitely think he's going to have the ability to work with uh, New Japan. Yeah, I I feel like that would be almost a certainty because he loves New Japan. He loves it over there. Yeah, so I think I am. Uh, I those are the things that I would be certain of. I think it's going to be in the seven figures, just because you know, 
it might not be exactly what the WWE was offering, but it's going to be a comfortable number, and he's going to be able to work with New Japan, and, you know, he's going to have the creative freedom that he desires, and I think those are all things that mean the creative freedom that, des- that he desires, being able to work in New Japan, I think those are all uh, mean more to him than money. Yeah. Because yeah, if money was the most important thing, he would have took the WWE contract. Yeah, absolutely. That's why I talked about on episode one. You know, he's, you know, Kenny Omega is the, is the Eddie Vedder of professional wrestling right now. You know, Eddie Vedder is, you know, one of the most artistic people in the world, but he gives a shit about money, basically. You know, he, he wants artistic freedom. The guy put out an entire album with just him and a ukulele a few years ago. You know what I mean? Like, he just, it's artistic freedom to these guys, and that's so cool. Uh, to watch these guys as artists, man. They're just, it's absolutely cool, you know? Yeah, and, and it's something that you appreciate. I appreciate me. I'm big on loyalty. That is one of my, like, big things in life is loyalty. And the fact that they stayed loyal to each other, passed up on the money, did everything they said they were going to do, and trying to build something together, whether it's successful or not, which I am definitely hoping it's successful. I am on the side of success. Whether it's successful or not, they did it together. They they are going. You're going to see their vision of what professional wrestling should be. Right. Yeah. I totally agree, man. Uh, next thing we want to talk about is Meltzer. Uh, Meltzer did some reporting this week and said uh, that Cody Rhodes is actually going to go uh, under under the knife this week, or he's going to go under the knife. Uh, it'll be next week, February twelfth. He's going to have a arthroscopic knee surgery. He expected to miss two or three months. Um, but even though they got him down for two or three months, uh, from what, what everyone's saying online and what Dave even said in the, in the report was that, uh, even though he'll be eligible to come back in two or three months, he has nothing slated until May 25th, which is double or nothing. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things, you know, my boy Cody's going, Hey, he's going to have a little surgery. You know, and it's nothing to sneeze at. As you can see, he, he if you can see from some of his videos, he still moves around pretty good. And I think the hardest thing is going to be trying to keep him still because he's such, you know, this with everything going on, he's such a busybody. That, saying still and saying hitting the surgery, you know, making sure he heals and ready for May 25th is going to be probably difficult for him just because, like I said, it's just – He's one of those people that he's the get up and go. He's the jump on the flight and go here. He he's about doing anything to promote the company. So you know he's gonna have to take care of himself uh, for a while. Uh, it, like he he wasn't scheduled to be on any shows or he doesn't have any bookings. So he's not supposed to wrestle until May 25th. Uh, he said on this other show that he has. Uh, that they put out the road to double or nothing episode one that he doesn't even know who he's going to wrestle at uh double or nothing yet. So that is very interesting. Yeah. That's pretty cool to, to think about that. They've got this big show coming up that they're going to try to sell what 15,000, 20,000 seats. And yeah. they don't even have uh who one of the biggest, biggest names in the company. They don't even have an opponent yet. So that's pretty cool. Uh, let's move on to some signings and rumors, and uh, I'm going to give you some names out there, and you tell me if they are for sure signings, if they're just rumors or what. Uh, let's start off with, first off, I want to start off with Luke Perry's son, uh, who was the, he was an actor on Beverly Hills 90210, now he's on a show called Riverdale. It's my wife's biggest celebrity crush, Luke Perry, but his son is Jungle Boy. Uh, has he signed with AEW? Is the reports true? Yes, uh, he was on uh, the Road to Double or Nothing episode one. Uh, they had where he signed Cody, and they had him sign in the paper uh, to be uh, on, be official uh, on the roster of AEW. He's one of the up and coming wrestlers. Uh, I've, as far as it, I've seen a little bit of uh, online tape with him as far as different matches he's been. He looks really athletic. Uh, him being Luke Perry's son probably doesn't hurt. I'm not saying that's the only reason he was signed. That would be, you know, but he's very, you know, he's very, he seems very talented and he seems very excited to be there. So, you know, I think that's important with AEW is to sign people that not everyone knows because now, like with him, he's going to be associated with AEW. If he breaks out, it will be like he broke out because of AEW. Right, right. Yeah, it's... That's true, and I, I have seen tape on him and stuff, and he seems 
Uh, really athletic. He's got the coolest hair ever. I want his hair so bad. Um, what about the uh, Chuck Taylor and Trent Beretta, uh, the best friends? Have yep. they also signed with AEW, or is that still a rumor? They finished up on the New Good Beginning and uh, U.S. Tour, I believe, the last day is tonight. But at the end of the weekend, that that's them. Uh, actually, he had them, um, Beretta had a match with uh, Juice last night and lost. And, you know, Juice thanked him. And, you know, apparently that's that was them finishing up with New Japan. Uh, from what I understand, Trent Beretta had a contract on the table from New Japan that they kind of had a handshake deal. And then I guess the AEW stuff came up and he kind of just backed out of that deal. And it looks like it's rumors are that he, the best friends as a tag team are going to be signed to AEW. That is the rumor that, you know, they don't have pen to paper. I would would not be surprised if they're not announced at either either mm-hmm. on this week's episode of BTE, which I kind of doubt, or they'll be announced at that uh, pool party. At the talent pool party? Yeah, yeah. I got you. What about Kaylee Ray? Kaylee Ray. That is a, one I've heard on different sites, like two or three different sites that uh, – that basically she's not going to sign with the WWE. It looks like she's going to, uh, she might be one of the talents announced at the, uh, at the uh, pool party again. Um, again, that is a, very much a rumor. Uh, like I said, I, this was uh, via bodyslam.net. I don't really know how reputable they are as far as uh, information. I've seen correct information. I've seen you know, not so correct information from every site. And then I saw another name. Uh, what, what was another name you were going to bring up? I'm sorry. Uh, Sammy Guevara. Yes, and I'm a big Sammy Guevara fan. I've only I've seen him work like two or three times. I'm in Oklahoma, Texas area. I've seen him work like two or three times. Super hot flyer. If they were going to do some type of junior division, he would definitely be uh, a big name for that junior division. Uh but he's very much a high flyer. He's one of those things, given the right stage, he could break out too. Because he's a very good looking person. I mean, I mean, like he's a good looking dude. Yeah, yeah, and he's uh, he's big into he's big, he's got a big internet following right now. He's got an awesome vlog that he does, and uh, he's got an awesome character going on. Yeah, uh, like I said, I'm big. I think he's super talented, and. I feel like I've heard rumors on the sites. He might have had like problems showing up. Hopefully, you know, he takes this, uh, takes this opportunity and, uh, really uses it to, uh, really uses it to show his talent. Because like I said, with AEW, at least for that first few weeks or whatever, you know, that it's around, you're going to get a lot of eyes. People that have lapsed as wrestling fans are going to be like, okay, let's see what they got. And it's going to be their opportunity. So a lot of people that, you know, right now he's like a wrestling, he, he's wrestling known. People that are in the know know him. But to get on that to the casuals, you know, he's going to definitely have to perform when given that opportunity. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, let's talk about the relationship with New Japan Pro Wrestling that they're going to have. Um, did Harold May say some stuff this week? I know you had mentioned it the other day when we had spoke, so I didn't know if you wanted to talk about that or. Yeah, it was, um, it wasn't, uh, I believe it was not this week, but last week. I, I just know that, uh, Harold May said that, uh, he, when he was asked directly about AEW, he says he's going to, take uh take a wait and see approach and when dealing with them and he wanted to see how basically what their vision of professional wrestling is new japan very much presents their wrestling like a sport like an actual competition so i uh, what i'm imagining just like me putting words is he was gonna wait to see how they present themselves if it's going to be closer to what new japan does closer to what wd we does or their own thing to decide if they want to actually be associated with them but you know the most of the thing most of the rumors are is not even rumors but it's right now they have a big show playing with roh for april you know, New Japan does. New Japan and ROH. Uh, and that's the is that the Madison Square Garden show? Yeah, the MSG G1 Supercard of Honor. They have that show. 
that they're literally co-producing with ROH. What, I mean, what sense or what good would it do to say, hey, we might be moving our partnership from ROH to AEW now? I yeah, mean, no, you know, no, yeah, I, I understand, like, uh, <laughs> You know, I would expect that after April, but I mean, yeah, yeah, and like there was, n- there's no reason to even think about it until after the April show goes along. After you see all elite, what kind of card they're putting on, the talent that they sign. You know, you you know, you know, yeah. you you know, you got your current girlfriend. She cooks and cleans for you. You know, she does she does everything you need. You know. And then there's the new hot chick. And you don't know what she brings to the table, so you stay at home for right now. <laughs> you stay at home, like, hey, let's see what she brings to the table before we decide. I mean, it's 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 a strategic move by New Japan. And I don't blame them. I mean, I wouldn't, you know, you know, you you have a a sold out arena that you've done with ROH, a great working relationship. A lot of times they do the thing where ROH and New Japan work together and. You know, their matches are even. ROH wins half, New Japan wins half. They've worked together a long time. Back, you know, maybe when New Japan wasn't the hot product, they were still working with ROH. You know, they have that long-standing relationship. And, you know, from what I understand, from listening to different shows, Japanese culture, very much about loyalty, you know, and, you know, consistency of brand. And ROH has been that consistency. My whole thing has always been the thought, why can't they all work together? That's my big thing. It's just shit. Uh, when it comes to wrestling fans, there's money. You know what I mean? Right. You know, I, you know I'm not, you know, I, I want the best wrestlers on each show, you know. So if you have a little AEW talent on ROH and New Japan talent on ROH and vice versa on the different shows, that only makes for a better product. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Uh, I want to talk about something for a second, and this uh, involves the uh, All Elite Wrestling merchandise and the WWE. And uh, I'm sure you've seen this, but there were some videos and a bunch of Twitter reports of fans being asked to remove AEW merchandise, uh, like their shirts. They were being told to they got to take off their AEW shirts. At the Royal Rumble, Raw, and SmackDown, is there any legitimacy to these claims that you know of? I've seen the Twitter videos. I've seen the, the pictures, the posts. They looks 100% legit. Uh, it's kind of it's kind of messed up that they're doing it. Uh, I you know I can't, but it's one of those things. No publicity is really bad publicity. So the WWE and having people take off the shirts and the stuff going on Twitter is actually getting AEW more over but and instead of just not doing anything. Yeah. Yeah, I, <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> it's, just, it's like, hey, you are bringing attention to a product that other people don't know. Like, I'm sitting, let's just say you're a casual WWE fan, and you're sitting in the same row, and the security comes up to him and has him move their shirt, and he's like, then I asked the question, what does that shirt mean? Does it mean something bad? No, that's the new wrestling company they're at. Oh, there's a new wrestling company? Who's in it? Oh, Chris Jericho, the Young Bucks, Cody Rhodes. Oh, I've heard of them. I've bought their stuff at Hot Topic. But I didn't know that they had a new uh I didn't know that they had a new company. And then you go on Google and you start searching, and you're like, Okay. You've just made them more popular. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. It's true. I don't know why WWE, they're a multi-billion dollar company. I don't know why they just don't ignore that, but yeah, yeah. whatever. It's, it, uh, it's it's like Walmart worrying about Aldi's. Yeah, it's true. I mean, <laughs> WWE's got, uh, <laughs> WWE's got uh, plenty of problems right now, uh, and I'll, I'll mention two of them right now. And uh, the first one is that they announced, I don't know if this is a work or a shoot, so we'll talk about this one first. But Dean Ambrose uh, asked, or announcing that he will re- not his will not renew his contract with the WWE whenever it comes up in April. Um, WWE announced it. Uh, it's been reported all over the place. Do you have? Uh, do you know if this is a work or a shoot? Okay, and you know I have been on the fence about this because I was like, when they uh, put it out, I was definitely on one hundred percent shoot. 
Uh, they're just trying to control the narrative, put their information out. And the idea of it being a work never crossed my mind. And especially in the press conference, they, I mean, in, in that press release, they used uh, the name John Jonathan Good. You know, they uh, said he was uh, definitely the, uh, you know, they said he, his real name. And usually they don't do that when dealing with, uh, you know, stuff that's uh, definitely a work. That's not something that they do. Uh, I saw more information on uh, him asking for his release. Apparently a direct quote is that he was, he hates the hokey shit. Uh, you know, he hates the uh, comedic shit that they try to uh, get him to do. Uh, and that basically he wants to, you know, you know, he wants to control his character. You know, he wants to control what he does more, uh, which is interesting, uh, interesting in it. I, Dean Ambrose is one of those people when they first did the shield, he was my favorite member. And over the years, with the hokey shit and how they've positioned them, it has gotten. I have grown more and more where I am not a fan of his. So, really, and do you think that you're not a fan of his because of stuff that he does, or because of stuff that creatives having him do? I'm guessing stuff that creatives having him do. Um, I remember when he used to work, he used to do this rebound lariat thing, and I thought he overused it. Um, and then uh, when I really started turning when his finisher turned from the double arm uh, from uh, what was Dirty Deeds, which was like um, it was like basically almost like a reverse DDT. He was a DDT. He'd faced this. He'd faced the same way as the opponent and landed down like almost like a bull and from the bulldog position. And then he went to the double arm DDT, and I always thought his double arm DDT looked lame. So it was like I would watch him, and they were like exciting, energetic, and kind of innovative when they first came. Then they went almost WWE fight, and it's like you were watching a Dean Ambrose match, and you could literally tell what move was coming next because he had become so predictable. Yeah. Yeah, I can understand that. Uh, the next one, uh, Hideo Itami, who uh, uh, we call Kenta on the indie scene. Uh, he's supposedly he's been asked for, he's asked for and been granted his release from the WWE and will be available to work anywhere and everywhere after his 90 day no compete clause. Um, any idea why this is going on? Is it just shit booking or what? Uh, Noah was just bought by a different company, uh, uh-huh. so it might be them calling him back home. Uh, but Hideo Tommy, he never fit. He never fit the WWE. Uh, he was small. Uh, he was never ripped. Uh, his whole, as far as physique, his whole thing was he was stiff. His strikes were the hardest. He was a very great, he was a very good athlete. You know, he was a very good wrestler and very innovative. But the thing about his innovation is, the flying knee that he uses, Daniel Bryan stole. Um, the GTS he was using, CM Punk stole. So all his moves were more identified with other people in the WWE. And his big thing was his strikes and him being stiff. And apparently, you know, he might have been too stiff for the people in the WWE. Then, most importantly... Uh, he kept getting injured anytime they tried to put him in a big spot. So he was kind of snake bitten that way. So it was like, as much, like, we never got Kenta in the WWE. We right. never got, we got Hideo Tommy. Hideo Tommy, uh, was the generic great value version of Kenta. Mm-hmm. And that's what we got. And he didn't, he never, and then he got hurt. So, establishing who a day old Tommy hat was never happened. And then by the time they actually got someone healthy and want to use them, they put them on 205 live with the whole respect me thing, which was kind of stupid. And it was just like, he was never, he was put in a position to succeed. Then he got injured. Then he was taken out of the position to succeed. And it was like, I personally believe the WWE thinks his best years are behind him. So they don't care if he goes sometime somewhere else. 
Really? I mean, I, tr- I truly do. I mean, I this might be the impo- unpopular opinion, uh, and, you know, people on the social suplex might be yelling at me that I'm dumb, but I just think they've killed him so much as far as his character that they're like, yeah, you can go. I mean, I I could see it. You know you what mean, I mean? Like, yeah, it was like, and, and, and like I've heard a lot of people think maybe they made a deal where he wasn't going to work at any other American company, or they were letting him go to go to Japan. I was like, I think they let him go because they had no use for him. Yeah, even him losing didn't do anything for the other person anymore. He was such a non-factor in the WWE. It's true. It's true. Uh, next thing I want to talk about is um, Jim Ross, good old JR. His contract expires with the WWE at the end of March, uh, and he said on his show that he will have no problem putting food on the table. Uh, do you think he's going to AEW? Do you think he's going to – is there any uh, rumors or anything saying that he might re-sign with New Japan? Well, there was the – there. I mean, let's see, about, what, six months ago? There was that rumor that JR and Chris Jericho was looking to start a wrestling company with uh-huh. the cons. I mean, this is the wrestling company. JR yeah. is, I think JR is very, very much working with AEW behind the scenes, you know, not putting his name on anything because he's, of course, still on a contract. But I think his contract is discussed. It's basically just waiting on the WWE's contract to expire so he can sign. Uh, I think, uh, yeah, I think he's been in it the whole, from the beginning. I think he's calling the shots to help him with uh, a lot of the talent, uh, bringing his expertise to wrestling. I just think it's, I think Jim Ross is just as much a part of AEW as anyone else. You th- already, you think already. Yeah, I think he, day. I think, I think, I think he's already doing it. Now, like, can he legally say he's doing it or anything? No. No, but if you're asking me my I completely opinion, not knowing Jim Ross personally, I want to let everyone know this is an opinion. This is a thought. I, I but for the life of me, I don't think there's any way he's not already handling stuff. Wow, that's kind of surprising. Like I, I just, you know what I mean. Do you think he's, you think he's getting some money on the side for it? I don't think so. I think he'll just get paid later. You know that kind of thing. You know, like right. uh, the contract will take care of it. But uh, it's like when it's, it's like in the situation. You know, it doesn't seem like the WWE uses him. You know, they were at least bringing him for, for spot calls. Like this Royal Rumble, they brought in Jerry the King Lawler to help with the Royal Rumble, not Jim Ross. They don't seem to be using him a whole hell of a lot. Right, right. Yeah, so yeah, I, mean, I don't, I don't even know what Jim Ross. I mean, I've only seen him. I've seen him in a couple of like pre shows. Yeah, and then like Raw twenty five. But I mean, hasn't really been used that much, you know. Exactly, but he still technically has a contract with the WWE, and he will honor that contract. Absolutely. Yeah. But uh, it's just like one of those things. I was like, you know, you can work without working. You know what I mean? You can, <laughs> you can, you can advise. You can tell people what you would do in a certain situation, and that, I mean, those are not against your contract. You know, so I could, I can imagine him helping AEW a lot. Uh, he, you know, he's been, he's been in the wrestling business, you know, longer than I've been alive. So. <laughs> and I, shit, I'm almost forty. He's been around, so he's gonna be able to be able to help you with a lot of the infrastructure parts. And I'm very happy that he's a part of it. I mean, you 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 can't have too much expertise. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So I'm I'm very happy about that. I was gonna I'm gonna backtrack a little bit to the Dean Ambrose thing. I would love for him you know, just to do, him and Adele Tommy. I would love for Ambrose to sign with AEW. Because I think with a little bit more creative freedom, I think you'll see a different Dean Ambrose or AK Johnny Moxley. I think you'll see a different, but I don't know if that's what he's going to do. Uh, a lot of people in the WWE, it burns you out so much that when you leave WWE, sometimes they just take a break from wrestling. Look at Wade Barrett. I mean, he doesn't wrestle. I mean, he does the whole thing where he was the uh, world of sport, like GM or whatever. And, you know, um, 
uh, what is the guy's name? He was Damian Mizdow. He went to Impact, but even he said he had planned on quitting until Impact called him. And now he doesn't, you know, he's on the internet, but he doesn't really wrestle. It's like WWE has this way of burning you out where you just don't want to be a part of wrestling anymore. Look at CM Punk. You know? Yeah. You know, and that's what I was like, gonna go with was punk. Yeah, it's just like they just don't want anything to do with wrestling. So I don't know what Ambrose or or I don't know what Mister Good is going to do. I think he is a huge free agent name just because of you know he's been in the main events and big shows with the WWE. He's wrestled Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32. You know he's He's had big spots. He has a huge following as far as the WWE crowd. It's a big name to sign. It's just, do you, it does he want to continue to wrestle is the big question with him. You know, Tommy, I think he's just going back to Japan. I would like to see him in New Japan, personally, in their junior division. would be awesome. Him versus Taiji Ishimori and him versus... Uh, him versus Taiji Ishimori and like maybe against Shingo, I think they could put on some really good matches. I think that would be a good way to reinvigorate his career. But, uh, yeah, hopefully. I mean, but, yeah, this being an AEW show, I would not be mad if either one of those people signed with AEW. I think, you know, Hideo Tommy should take his period of time or break or however long he has before he can work again and, you know, get kind of back in shape. He looks like he got a little chunky in 205 Live. And, you know, get back in shape, get back in fighting shape, make sure he's healed up, and that way he can hit the ground running after his uh, non-compete clause is up. Yeah, yeah, I agree. Uh, if you had to put a percentage on what the chances are Dean Ambrose shows up in AEW, what would you put the percentage on? I'm going to say right now, 30%. Oh, so you think it's a little more unlikely than it is likely? Yes, a little more unlikely than it is likely. Uh, I it's one of those things. I you know I will be I'll be in the building, and you know he shows up. I'm not gonna know what his music is because he'll be using stuff different from WWE. But if he shows up, that would be awesome. I just like I would like I'd love to see him, like him versus uh, who Joey Janela. And uh, uh, like a hardcore match, I think that would be really fun. Uh, I, just, I like to see Dean Ambrose in a lot of different things. Like I say, he's never been one of my favorite wrestlers, but to me, how you wrestle in the WWE and how you work on the indies, you know, could be completely different things. Because if he, but if he comes out there and just does his same Dean Ambrose shtick, I wouldn't like it. Yeah, I could see that. I could see it. Yeah. Uh, I do believe that's all the topics that we're going to cover today, man. Um, wanted to reiterate that February 7th, 2019, 8 p.m. Central Time, is the talent pool at the MGM Grand Hotel. Do you want to talk about the Twitter giveaway we got going on? Yes, uh, this is very exciting. Twitter giveaway, AEW Zip Hoodie. It's the one you see in the Being the Elite that everybody's wearing, the gray hoodie. What we're going to do is uh, when once we get the show uploaded and on the social suplex, uh, we're going to get the show online, and then we're going to put out an official uh, post. Uh, it's going to be pinned to the top of the page. What we would like you to do is like, retweet, uh, you know, follow us. Follow the AE Elite page. So it's a AE, uh, excuse me, uh, AE, uh, ATE Elite Pod, Pod. So it's at AT Elite Pod. So what we want you to do is follow our page, like the post, and share it, and you will be entered into the contest to win the zip hoodie. We will give it to, we will uh, announce the winner on the March 2nd show. Uh, that'll be the March 2nd release of All Things Elite. Um, even if you want to get on the comments, what we like you to do is, and this is just additional, but you don't have to do this to be uh, part of the contest, is just at one of your friends in it so they can come on and do it all. And we're just trying to get our name out there, trying to get everyone to listen to the show. Uh, uh, definitely, you know, try, you know, us buying some, uh, elite merch doesn't hurt because, you know, I buy all the merch anyway. 
Uh, so yeah, definitely. Uh, again, to qualify, you must follow the page, like that tweet, and share it, and you will be entered in a contest to win the zip hoodie. Also, remember, uh, definitely, uh, we are on the social suplex, so you can definitely go to the Pro Wrestling Tea Store forward slash social suplex and buy shirts there from us and listen to all of the amazing shows on social suplex including wilford watches and keeping it strong style and one nation radio nice nice i do believe that is everything for this week's episode we will see everyone monday for buying your daily show and then next week we will also be back with episode three of all things elite does that sound good, Floyd? That sounds perfect, sir. All right, man. Well, for everyone out there listening, we appreciate you tuning in. Stay strong and too sweet.